All right, guys, so what's up? We'll be talking about the Dula Voice Legends. We're talking about the Dula Voice Legends. Now, for the Dula Voice Legends, we'll be talking about it without pictures because I made a video earlier on and uploaded on YouTube about the Dula Voice Legends, and the YouTube customer care messaged me that it is a shocking content because in the lecture, I actually put out some endoscopic pictures. So they said it's a shocking content and it's not nice and all of that. So if you want to see the pictures of Dula Voice Legends, the link to download the pictures is in the description of this video, right? So here we just have the lecture. So you can actually download those pictures before you come back to watch this lecture, right? So Dula Voice Legends are actually what? Uncommon, but they are important, okay? And uh, okay, they are actually uncommon, but important causes of acute upper gastrointestinal bleeding. I came across uh, Dula Voice Legends when I was first of all reading about upper GI bleeding, okay? And I could see that uh, Bohev syndrome, Mallory Waste tears, Dula Voice Legends, all of these are potential causes of what? Upper GI bleeding, okay? So we talk about their characteristics, we talk about their symptoms, we talk about the diagnosis, the treatment, and prognosis of a patient that has what? Dula Voice Legends. For the characteristics, I'm talking about their location. They are most commonly found in the stomach, right? Particularly within what? 6 cm of the gastroesophageal junction. All right? Talking about their pathophysiology, they are characterized by what? A tortuous artery. When you download those pictures, I told you guys the description, uh, the link to download the, the pictures is in the description of this video. When you download it, you see that an artery is kind of like spread on the on the gastrointestinal tract so the artery will be large will be tortuous okay and um okay tortuous artery that erodes the overlying mucosa without any associated ulceration so it's just the artery we see okay like a delta of a river you understand so what is the size the artery is significantly large larger than the normal mucosa capillaries okay and typically the size range from what one to five millimeters in diameter. Okay, what is the symptoms for a patient that has dual voice lesions? There'll be hematomas, uh, hematemesis, okay? Where the patient is uh, basically what? Vomiting blood, okay? So you are vomiting blood, and this is the most common what presentation. Milena, uh, okay, now the blood will have to move from the upper GI to the anus, so, before it gets to the anus, uh, basically the, the the color will change, all right? They'll be changing color, and you'll be having the 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 feces will be dark, okay? So that's a black tarry stools, okay? And this is due to what the blood has been digested along the line. The hematochesia is less common, but you can have what bright red blood in stool, all right? And that's when there's excessive bleeding, all right? So anemia in some cases, chronic bleeding can lead to iron deficiency anemia. What is the diagnosis? You might want to do endoscopy, like from the pictures you just uh, downloaded. You see that those pictures are mostly what um, endoscopic pictures, right? So it is a diagnostic modality of choice, right? It is allowing for both diagnosis and treatment of the condition. Imaging, in some cases, angiography can be used if endoscopy is unsuccessful. Treatment now, you can use endoscopy therapy. This includes what injection therapy, you inject epinephrine, mechanical therapy where you use endoclips, thermal therapy where you use what argon plasma coagulation and what electrocard therapy. Then surgery, historically surgery was common, but now it is reserved for cases where endoscopy and angiographic treatments have failed. Okay, so you have to now proceed to surgery. Medication. Since they are bleeding, you now give them drugs that would stop bleeding, okay? So anticoagulants and what antiplatelet agents are associated with an increased risk of what dual force lesions, okay? So that's it. Oh, let me tell you something. Okay, the patient is bleeding. So if you give them, okay, 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 that means you shouldn't give them anticoagulants, okay? because they need coagulation rather. Do you understand? Do you understand what they wrote there? Okay. So what is the prognosis? For mortality, the mortality rate is relatively low, right? But it can be higher in patients with significant comorbidities. 
reoccurrence, the reoccurrence rate have been have decreased with advances in endoscopic treatment, but it can still occur again, right? So Dula Foy's lesions are actually rare but potentially life-threatening conditions that require prompt diagnosis and treatment to prevent serious complications, right? So that's it for Dula Foy's lesions. To download the uh, pictures for this lecture, the link is in the description box of this video. Bye for now.